The bookseller is celebrating its 30-year anniversary by picking the UK's most successfully sold book in the past three decades. The British magazine whittled the possibilities down to 30 quite diverse titles. From Barack Obama's memoir to Fifty Shades of Grey to a Jamie Oliver cookbook, the committee says they're considering these books because they defined their year and the publishing trends that followed. Novelist and literary critic Jude Cook joins me now. Hi Jude, so uh, when you go back and, and look at the winners, what kind of uh, direction do you think the publishing industry took in the last 30 years? Well, it's hard to, to sort of re reduce that to a direction. I think what you have is a pretty representative list of, of uh, the biggest sellers um, uh, over the last 30 years. I mean, you've got some commercial fiction, literary fiction, cookery books, children's books. Um, and bear in mind, it's not just for the best writing. I mean, it's put together this list by the bookseller and they privilege sales o o over a everything really but not in a kind of mercenary way i think the literary industry is, a, is an, an ecosystem in that you need to to have big selling books like harry potter uh, uh hillary mantel um barack obama's memoir in order to drive uh retail to keep those bookshops on, on on the street so i think it's a pretty good representative list you know there's some el gray's Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, sorry, I've forgotten the name. <laughs> um, Fifty Shades of Grey, anyway, is a, is a strange one to be on there. But you can see that it's there because it sold so many books. But the, just to clarify, it's not only about the best-selling aspect of the books, right? No, and Peter Jones, who works for the bookseller, said the award celebrates the best of writing and the best of publishing. So you've got some amazing literary fiction there. Zadie Smith's White Teeth, Sally Rooney's on there, David Nichols uh, uh, with One Day, Hilary Mantel. But also you've got books that started franchises such as the first Harry Potter book. Um, and the qualification, the best of publishing as well is important because I think all those books were published very well. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they, they did enormously well, but they took care, the publishing houses took care of their their authors afterwards and, and, mm -hmm. and made sure that this, this brand became something that readers could buy into. Uh, the Philip Pullman uh, uh, series of novels, for instance, is a good example of that. Okay, so Jude, uh, I have to admit that I'm, I'm a bit skeptical when it comes to, uh, I mean, when people focus this much on the trade aspect of publishing. How do you feel about the fact that they are only focusing on this aspect? Do you feel like they're sort of stealing the soul from literature by, uh, by sort of imposing this pressure of selling on authors? Well, I would argue that they've, they've got the balance right. I mean, Sally Rooney, for instance, wasn't the best-selling book of, of uh, 2018 by any means, her book, Normal People. Um, last year, I think the best, the, the book they picked to win was Jamie Oliver's book, which certainly sold far in excess of Sally Okay, but Rooney. can I so cut you off there? there? Because, because, I'm sorry, for example, when you look at Men Booker uh, winners last year, Bernadine mm. Evaristo, she can't end up on this list, right? It's impossible. But then she's the winner of Men Booker. So Sally Rooney was longlisted for Men Booker, but she can never really get that, but she can get this one. So how does this come at play? When I see Sally Rooney on this list, I feel like, Bernadine Evaristo could have made it too, but she can't because she doesn't sell as much. And I feel like this is sort of unfair, but please convince me that it's not. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, not, it's not just sales. I mean, it's books that defined their year as well. This is what the bookseller have, have said. Um, and I do feel that with, you mentioned the booker, the last four or five years, the booker has been very brave in putting, in, in, in choosing uh, winners that were very much you know, hardcore literary fiction, Marlon James, Paul Beatty's book, George Saunders, but they, there needs to be recognition within the industry of sales because those books wouldn't exist without uh, Bernadine Evaristo. You know, her career has been developed very carefully by her publisher, but all those other books, the Harry Potter, uh, different publisher, but were subsidizing great books by Bernadine. Okay, tell me which books would make up your shortlist from this long list. I think the, the, uh, it would be great if a children's book won because they do sell enormously well. So you've got Harry Potter 
I personally love Robert McFarlane's book with Jackie Morris, The Lost Words. If it had to be literary fiction, I would choose possibly White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I think it's going to be read in, in, in 50, 100 years time. And how likely is Harry Potter getting this? It might win it, but then you've got to think about the judges. They've got some very sort of uh, literary people pe judging it. John Mitchinson, uh, Andy Miller of Backlisted Podcast, they're very literary, have very literary sensibility. I'm not sure they'll choose Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. They might choose a commercial title that has uh, a literary sensibility, such as uh, Alice Sebol's The Lovely Bones, for instance, which won in 1991. But we'll see. I'm sure it's going to be a, a, a surprise and a, and a joy to see who wins. Exactly. Let's wait and see in May. Jude Cook, good to have you back on our show. Thank you.